Breaking news, a sample image from the new Nikon Z8 has leaked and we'll take a look at it. A new Sony APS-C camera has leaked and artificial intelligence wins an art contest. We'll talk about all of these, but first I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace creates websites. Wait, that's not quite right. You create websites and Squarespace is the best tool to use. Squarespace hosts your website. They keep it running. They provide service. They make sure that it works perfectly on mobile devices, on computers. They create beautiful templates that are the starting point for your design. So when you want to create a website, go to squarespace.com slash Tony. You'll find it's incredibly easy, but it is all you, your work, your photography, your video, your business. After your free trial, when you love it, use the coupon code Tony and they'll give you 10% off. Thanks for making this possible Squarespace, our lead story. Artificial intelligence won an art contest and the person who created it got a prize. Now, technically this is not photography. This was a digital art contest and most entrants in contests like these will use their pen in Photoshop and actually draw something out. But Jason Allen here used an artificial intelligence tool called Midjourney. Midjourney takes text prompts and creates images based on that. Artificial intelligence can generate images by examining existing images and then taking a prompt that you give it and combining these things together in a very photorealistic way. Jason hasn't revealed the prompt he used to generate this, but he probably said something like medieval people standing in front of a science fiction portal and artificial intelligence would take images that match some of those and then find different ways to create them. Now, in recounting his creation of this, Jason said he created hundreds of different images and spent many weeks fine-tuning it. While he started with the Midjourney AI tool, he did about 10% of the work in Photoshop and then upscaled it using Gigapixel AI, a product I actually endorse. I really like Gigapixel AI to make high-resolution images, so if you want to make your own images higher megapixel, higher resolution, sharper, then try out sdp.io slash topaz. I have a whole video review on it. So he used that same tool. And I actually think the image turned out pretty stunning. But what he didn't do was draw it from scratch. And now there was nothing in the rules of the digital art contest that said it couldn't be generated by AI, probably because that has never come up before. And Jason did say that he created the image with the mid journey tool, though it's entirely possible the people organizing it didn't know that that was an AI tool as I had never heard of that particular AI tool before. Some people are really pissed about this and I kind of get it because AI has also been impacting the photography industry. Here's what one person on Twitter said. We're watching the death of artistry unfold right before our eyes. If creative jobs aren't safe for machines, then even high skilled jobs are in danger of becoming obsolete. What will we have then? I actually think those points are all valid. Is the world going to be a better place if AI can do the artistic jobs or even the non-artistic jobs? Sure, perhaps human productivity overall will increase, but humans themselves will have less and less to do. We could live in a society where machines farm all of our food and just distribute it to us and they make fake TV shows after analyzing everything that we like and everything is computer generated and maybe we'd be happy but would we be productive? Could humans be happy without also being productive? Not everybody can give their job to AI and move up to some higher level job. Some people will always be truck drivers. Some people will always be the ones coloring comic books and if they can't do that then they will just sit on a couch and rot. At least I believe that. I consider myself a futurist. I am fascinated by AI, but do I necessarily think that wide implementation of AI is going to make humanity better or happier? I'm not sure I do, but I would like to hear what you think in the comments down below because AI is already being used to generate photorealistic images of people in different settings, even though the person in the setting never actually existed. Giving the person who just prompted the AI full rights to this without having to hire a photographer and the average viewer wouldn't know that it wasn't real. They're very realistic. And so a lot of stock and commercial photographers are probably soon going to be losing their work. Even fashion and glamour type photography could be disappearing really soon. I do believe there's going to be a heavy impact from AI on our industry in the next 10 years. 
Let me know what you think. Now let's talk about a new leaked Sony camera that I saw on SonyAlphaRumors.com. Check that blog out. Subscribe to their RSS feed. I get it every day. He's actually really journalistic. He is saying the camera is going to be called the Sony FX30. FX means it's in their cinema lineup. So it's not a stills focused camera, though it might be capable of taking stills. You're only going to really be using it for video. But about 85 to 90 percent of us are shooting video, maybe stills also. And the market for video specific cameras continues to increase. Now the FX30 is interesting because it seems to be the Sony FX3 full frame camera, which is actually the Sony A7S III in a cinema body, but it has an APS-C sensor. That might seem weird because cinema cameras tend to be very expensive, so why wouldn't you want them to be full frame? But the fact is many, many cinema cameras are what they call Super 35, which is basically APS-C size, and many lenses are actually optimized for that Super 35. So it kind of makes total sense for people looking for a Super 35 sized sensor. Now Sony Alpha Rumors is saying that it's going to be a 26 megapixel sensor and he actually speculated that it might be the same sensor from the Fujifilm X-H2S which Sony seems to manufacture. And otherwise the spec should all be similar to the existing full frame FX3. So it'll probably have two CF Express type a slots, which you could also put SD cards into, shoot 4K 120 or 4K at 60 frames per second raw through an HDMI output. Now I can't be completely confident about those because the A7S III, the FX3 do 4K 120, but they have a 12 megapixel sensor, so they don't have to do any pixel binning or line skipping or combining different pixels. They just read the sensor out one pixel at a time and thus high frame rates are actually pretty easy. With a 26 megapixel sensor, you would have to do something to get that 4K 120, so maybe the quality will be lower or maybe the camera is actually doing a whole lot more processing. It's certainly possible. Many of the same cinema features are going to be there. Things like you expect like S-Log3, S-Cinetone, um, it have that same FX cage-free design so you can attach multiple different things in different orientations. Tally lights where it lights up to show that it's actually recording and the professional audio. So for example, through an extra adapter you could hook XLR inputs into it, this making it more useful in a wide variety of different production environments including like live studio environments. Sony Alpha Rumors is saying the price is going to be about $2,500 and that it should launch near the end of this month. And I just realized it's already September. How is that possible? Now, into our last news piece, the biggest news piece here. I did a lot of investigation into this. The newcamera.com found that Nikon put up a 67 megapixel image on their Chinese social network. Here is the post. They were promoting a photography training class that covered both portraits and still life. And one of the still life images, if you open it up as I did here, has dimensions of 6,670 pixels wide by 10,000 pixels tall. Which if you math that out, it's super easy. It means it's 66.7 megapixels big. but there is no camera that produces images that are 66.7 megapixels. Now that aspect ratio is two to three, which is exactly the ratio you get out of like a 4,000 by 6,000 24 megapixel sensor. Now it could have been upscaled by something like Gigapixel AI, but why would you do that? It could have been taken with a GFX 100, a 100 megapixel camera, but that doesn't feel right to me because if you were cropping something, you probably wouldn't land on 10,000 pixels exactly. And even if you were scaling something down, you would probably scale it to a specific size and not a specific 10,000 pixel dimension, especially if you were giving it to Nikon to publish on their social media. I actually think it was probably the full output from a 67 megapixel camera that we have not found yet. I also could not find the sensor. Power, Sony, they don't seem to sell a 67 megapixel sensor, but Nikon frequently works with companies, Sony or otherwise, to put otherwise unannounced sensors in their cameras. So it's still a very distinct possibility. Now I looked at the other images in this post and two of them were 45 megapixel images. So probably came from a Z9 or a Z7 Mark II, but one of them was only 720 pixels wide. Now that's a weird number. That's totally fine for publishing on social media, but that happens to be the output that you would scale something down to by default if you wanted to email someone an image. So my personal theory, 
Nikon China Social Media reached out to a couple of photographers to lead a course in portraits and still life, and they asked that artist to send them pictures from their portfolio that they could license, and of course they'd probably have to be taken with Nikon cameras. The artist who sent the still life of the toy with the coins probably sent the whole file and probably didn't think about the fact that it was taken with a Nikon camera that they were currently testing. All of the metadata was stripped from the image. Now, let's look close up at this image, and what you'll see is something interesting. First, there's no reds, there's no greens, there's no blues. If you were to take a high megapixel image that was all a red subject, you would actually only be using about one quarter of the pixels because bare sensors have two green pixels, one blue pixel, and one red pixel. So one out of four pixels registers on a red subject, one out of four pixels registers on a blue subject. That's why your blue skies have so much noise, even at your base ISO. You're only registering one quarter of the overall sensor size. But there's one scenario when you will maximize the amount of detail captured in an image, and that is if it is grayscale, as this subject is. Also, all of the bottle caps have this nice sort of brushed texture to them, which is perfect for highlighting massive amounts of detail. It is as if the photographer crafted this image to be the most zoomable possible image, like something you might do if a camera company asked you to create sample images specifically to highlight a high megapixel sensor. So this all actually adds up to me. And I would bet in the next month we will see Nikon announce either a Z7 Mark II or a Z8 with a 67 megapixel sensor. And I bet they probably won't reuse this image as one of the samples, but I bet that was the intention of this image. Now, some of you are already saying, who wants that many megapixels? I love high megapixel images. I love making huge prints, but I already have a 60 megapixel camera, the Sony a7R4, which was an upgrade to Sony's 42 megapixel a7R3. When I tested those two cameras side by side in a studio environment on a tripod with a delayed shutter with perfect light at the base ISO in an environment designed to optimize the amount of detail the camera would capture, in no scenario could I see any benefit going from 42 megapixels to 60 megapixels. So if you're upgrading from a Z9 or a Z7 II at 45 megapixels to 67 megapixels, are you actually going to see better pictures? I don't, I don't believe that you will. I think we need to make a much bigger leap to 100 or 200 megapixels before you'll be able to look at it and say, oh, okay, yeah, this is the sharper type images that I've been wanting to get. So I'm very excited about the new high megapixel Nikon camera, and we now have exactly one little bit of detail about it. In the comments down below, tell me about whether you're excited about it or what you'd like to see from the next Nikon camera. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We have several exciting new reviews coming up as well as tutorials for your favorite cameras like the Sony a7 IV and the Canon R10 and the Nikon Z30. And thank you to our sponsor Squarespace who makes websites possible created by you, highlighting you, your photos, your video, or your business. Whatever you want to look amazing on the web, head to squarespace.com slash Tony, get your own domain, put your name in it or the name of your business or whatever you can come up with that's easy to remember, easy to tell people. So when you meet a stranger, you can say, hey, check out my website at northropphotography.com. And it's that easy to show off your work, make a new contact, create new business for yourself. When you try it out for free and you love it, the coupon code TONY will get you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Bye.